Uh, let's start with the illusion of control. Um, so I actually demoed or s sort of demoed this at CT Pug last weekend. That went completely horribly considering that I tried a two a uh, new version of the firmware and I was sick and stuff like that. So this has improved a lot. Um, I'll see how much I can do with the embedded controller on a stage. Um, but let's get going. Um, who here has seen, tried or heard of MicroPython before? Okay, cool. Um, so it's something that I just picked up uh, for fun, tried around. Uh, been rather interesting. Um, back or sure. Um, so basically, uh, running Python on uh, microcontrollers or any constrained environment. Um, you know, running Python on a server or even your computer is relatively easy, or even on a uh, a Raspberry Pi, but uh, think even smaller than that. Um, just quick on me, um, I work at Vast Solutions, since the shirt uh, and the other colleagues. Um, and so this talk is not at all related to what I do. Um, and then otherwise, uh, I help run a Wasp Cape Town every other now and then we do a talk. So if you keen to do anything around security, let us know. Um, so that's the general outline. It might have changed as I've added slides, but uh, I'll run you through MicroPython, the idea, uh, how it all comes together, the hardware API, which is essentially the core of it, um, MicroPython versus normal Python and Arduino, uh, libraries, uh, there's a MicroPython web framework as well. Um, and then uh, building MicroPython, I'll talk about it quickly because it's slightly boring, and then move on to some uh, use cases for it. And then uh, I'll focus mostly on the ESP8266. There is a device specifically built for MicroPython, but I quite like the ESP8266, and I wasn't sure if I would even get the board in time if I ordered a Pi board for this. Um, and uh, to use a, a sort of simplified uh, concept of what it is, it's Python 3-based syntax uh, for microcontrollers and with the Internet of Things market in mind. Uh, n most people going into the Internet of Things might not be uh, embedded uh, developers. So they might not have a good understanding of C or Lua or anything else that is um, in that space. Um, so uh, why MicroPython before we even go into uh, what it is? Why would you even use it? Um, obviously, Python being a high-level language, uh, MicroPython tries to take a high-level approach to, um, to hardware, like a, a hardware API. Uh, it's got a nice open source community going. If there's a device that you'd like to link up, uh, I linked up a device that a friend of mine had uh, last, well, this week, found a library for it that someone already had written. So I literally just had to interface with the library, didn't have to write any code to do it. It's easy to learn and read, um, has a lot of powerful features, um, and it's not JavaScript, Lua, C, which might uh, shy away some people. Um, and why not normal Python? Why not PyPy? So uh, if I look at the ESP8266 device uh, here that I'll show you later as well, it has a really low amount of RAM and ROM. So normal Python would fill up uh, even a string or an object in Python would probably uh, take up all the resources on the, the little machine and, you know, what can you do after that? Um, most microcontrollers need uh, optimized code. Um, and then, uh, especially CPython, a lot of libraries try and cache everything into the RAM uh, off disk to speed it up. That would kill the device. Um, and you can read up on more of the differences if you feel like it. Um, some of the other differences is uh, it's got a its own gar 
garbage collector versus the uh, normal reference counting. Um, classes and objects are not 100% implemented like uh, C Python 3. So this is where I have to stress that MicroPython isn't Python. It's an implementation based on C Python 3. So it's familiar, but you will find differences if you uh, go through the process. Um, and we finally get to what is MicroPython. Uh, MicroPython was a Kickstarter project initially uh, around what they called the Pi Board. Um, they actually successfully funded the campaign. And compared to normal hardware projects in Kickstarter where they just push for getting the hardware out, they actually set goals for libraries, for functions, for different devices, not just their own device. So the more funding they got, the more features you got with MicroPython up to the point where eventually uh, the project was fully funded. They continued with the development and other people started picking up with different devices and adding their own things onto it. And uh, I'll also talk briefly about the Pi board a little bit later. Um, so the gist of it being a tiny implementation of Python running on something like a uh, PIC or TNC or uh, even BBC's Microbit or their own Pi board. Um, some of the features in MicroPython, uh, the first thing is it actually has a REPL. So you um, often with microcontrollers, and you see this with Arduino, is they'll have an entire tool chain, an IDE and everything, but on each uh, completion of your code, you pretty much have to flash it to the device to see if it works. Uh, MicroPython helps with that because you can load the firmware onto it, the basic firmware, and start interfacing um, with the REPL. Um, this is especially powerful um, for if you're doing prototyping, if you have a device, you're not sure what each pin's doing. You link it up to a device running MicroPython and you use the high level API to start hitting the pins, um, see what it returns, what you can send it. Um, auto completion, auto indentation. So for first time Python users, that helps a little bit. Not sure what the class of function contains. Uh, it has a paste mode. So instead of um, you can build all of your code and uh, ship it as a firmware um, upload or you can just copy scripts that you've written um, if you just want to do some quick prototyping. Uh, it has a web uh, interface as well, um, hardware API as I've mentioned a couple of times, and you can actually also do uh, assembler on it if you want to interface directly with the hardware. And then it also has a special variable, the underscore, so when you're working in the REPL, you do something like 15 plus 5. Um, it actually captures it in a temporary variable that you could use afterwards. So I've spoken about the hardware API already. And uh, a lot of the core um, philosophy behind uh, MicroPython is abstracting to some extent uh, you from the hardware in an easy to use way. So you have uh, UART, uh, just general input-output pins, I2C. Um, you have a whole bunch of pre-built APIs that you can use. Across different devices, the API will change slightly. But if you're using the machine, uh, uh, you'll usually have the same uh, features or behavior across all of them. The Pi board is a bit different as it has its own uh, Pi, Pi board functionality and API that's obviously a lot more supported. So if you want to get off the ground quickly, you go with the Pi board. Otherwise, you've got everything at your disposal already and a lot of um, documentation and resources to actually use. Um, compared to uh, Arduino, um, you know, with Arduino, you've got the uh, IDE. It can interface directly with the Arduino. Um, MicroPython is mostly just the language. Um, so it puts a bit more of the, the uh, effort on you. Um, and there's a couple of others. I'm not going to go into Arduino too much, because that's obviously not what I'm covering. Um, 
And uh, as I said before, um, the one thing with something like the Arduino is that it used compiled code. So if you are trying to just debug something quickly, you'll see uh, what kind of uh, functionality it has. MicroPython's easy to just open up the uh, inter interactive uh, REPL and just go through the language. And um, uh, a lot of the libraries that Python already has are too big for most of the devices to actually use. So um, if you go on PyPy, you'll find a lot of these upip or urlib, uh, so micro libraries, if you can call it that, that they've um, started implementing um, where the normal library won't work. So um, some some of uh, normal uh, Python 3 is interchangeable, but most of it not. And also for optimization for lower RAM usage, they've gone and rewritten or uh, basically made smaller compressed libraries uh, to use. Um, but I mean, like a lot of things uh, seem or, or are very uh, familiar to any Python developer already. Although multiprocessing is one of those libraries where <laughs> on an ESP8266, that's uh, rather wasteful. So it depends on the device once again. Um, and that's also a big thing with MicroPython is that the documentation that you'll need to read most of the time uh, specify the device. Don't just read the general documentation. And um, I've talked about machine before. There's also a MicroPython specific library, a network library um, for using most of these. A lot of these devices have wireless LAN built in. Um, or some kind of network access. So it's easy to interface with that. There's an easy to use API. Um, and then um, also the UC types. Um, a quick and interesting thing is that someone actually already wrote a Flask like web framework called PicoWeb. Now, f as much as I've tried, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but I can't actually get it to run. So the jury's still out on this one. Um, and it can actually also run in uh, C Python 3.4.2 or higher, um, but you do need the MicroPython libraries that it uses, uh, and it's asynchronous, um, much like the, the syntax looks like Flask. Oh, sorry about that. So yeah, um, obviously the idea being close to Django, Flask or Bottles, so that you could adopt the existing um, Python developer mindset with this little framework. Um, for most of these devices, this is probably also overkill, um, as you can just write your own little uh, web server and just uh, serve static content. But if you feel like templating uh, and using JSON and a little more advanced features. This is where PicoWeb comes in, and um, I will one day get this to work. That is a challenge I will have to set for myself. So MicroPython um, still isn't at a point where you can easily just get it off uh, apt-get or, or, or something like that. Um, some people do. Or, or MicroPython, the organization itself, will have certain builds for it that you can download. Um, some of them are often quite old. So generally, the idea is to build it yourself, uh, clone the GitHub directory, a uh, uh, GitHub page, and then um, with all the needed packages to build it yourself. Um, if you're doing it on a Unix-based system, you can easily get used to the language without having to flash to a device or using a device. Um, you will not have a lot of the microcontroller-based libraries like uh, network and stuff like that. So um, it depends on what you want to do with it. You could use normal Python and on a Unix system if you have enough hardware. Um, and the builds go up quite high. I'm still trying to figure out if it's caching something. Um, but specifically, uh, where I talk about the 4.5 gigs, 
is not for the Unix or any of the other devices. It's specifically an ESP8266 toolchain that's taking up all the space. And I'm still working on getting it working in Alpine Linux as well. Um, building it for, um, for Unix is fairly easy. You install um, a couple of li libraries and packages, and um, always good to just get all the sub-modules for it as well as it uses stuff like, uh, I think it's Berkeley database and a couple of other things. Um, the AXTLS is an embedded uh, SSL library that it's dependent on, and then you make it, and it's, f uh, f if I, you can either do a normal make or a make bold, and it will actually also um, So if you do a normal make, it's just going to um, compile all of the C code. Uh, if you do a make uh, install, um, it'll actually also put uh, links to the executables in your user slash bin um, as MicroPython. And as I didn't actually mention before, they also have their own version of uh, pip called MicroPip. So once you've got a uh, bolt, you can just run it interactively. Um, as I've said, it has tab completion. Um, and then, uh, for instance, you can use their, uh, their own version of pip, much like you use the current version of pip without all the um, advanced functionality. They have worked virtual env into it as well. So you could um, get something like micro requests, um, and it's fairly simple to use. Um, so possibly useful for developing modules for it uh, or libraries and just playing around with it. But that's not sort of the, the, the key strength of, of MicroPython. Um, so if I move on to the Pi board, this is the board that they actually built uh, everything around, um, the, the Kickstarter campaign. Um, it's got a little bit more hardware than um, most microcontrollers, uh, like the ESP8266. It has a SD card slot. It has a USB, mini USB already on it, and Wi-Fi uh, accelerometer. Um, and it's fairly easy to program because of the, the uh, hardware API that it has PYB. And you can put, uh, it has some LEDs on the board as well, so it's easy to get going with lights flashing. Um, and they have some hardware that's already compatible with it. So that's probably the easiest way to get going. Um, that's accessing both the LED and the accelerometer. And that's sort of the hardware that's running on it. It's got uh, 24 um, input-output pins, a uh, couple of LEDs, 3.3 volts, uh, micro USB, as I said, 96 megahertz uh, CPU, and about 128 kilobits of RAM. So still a small device, but fairly um, powerful for something like MicroPython to use. Um, and if you are not quite uh, comfortable with hardware, it's probably the first place to start and easy to get going. And now to uh, the more interesting stuff for me at least is the ESP8266. Anyone know of, played with it, burnt one out, broken it, uh, thrown it in a field with two AA batteries and fetched it a week later and found what, what might be on it? Um, so, uh, if I, it, it's um, based um, on a uh, Chinese company's designed, I think they're called Espref Systems, 
um, and the basic um, chip has both Wi-Fi and input and output uh, pins on it. So the Wi-Fi part of it is what gave it such quick um, notoriety. Um, initially, people actually had to use Google Translate to get through the Chinese documentation to actually even do anything with it. Um, but considering that you can pick up the device that I have and a couple in my bag are between a dollar and three dollars per device. Um, the ESP01 was the first version they brought out. Um, a bit of a pain because if, you, if you're not keen to solder and build your own stuff and work with a breadboard, then programming it is a bit of a pain. As it moved on, it got more pins. And then um, other companies also started adding stuff like USB to uh, UART on it. Um, some of them you get with uh, Arduino also connected to it, so you could expand the pins. Um, and it's got a 32-bit, 80 megahertz uh, CPU on it, single core. You can uh, put it up to a 160 megahertz, um, 96 uh, kilobits of RAM of data RAM and 64 of instruction RAM, and obviously has Wi-Fi um, with WPA, WPA2, and WEP, uh, 16 input and output pins, and UART, and a couple of things. So um, in terms of like Internet of Things kind of devices, this is great. It's really low power. Um, you can run it off two uh, AA batteries if you really wanted to. Uh, lots of pins to work with, uh, can run a web server on it. Um, and when you actually buy it, generally, uh, depending on uh, if you buy one of the, um, like the device that I have, um, generally the other companies will flash it with the Node MCU firmware, which is um, Lua based, so a Lua scripting engine, but um, that's not what we're here for. Um, so the device that I have is uh, based off this, it's a D1 Mini, and I've just used this as it sort of shows you uh, all the pins and stuff like that, which is really useful when you're actually trying to program these things. You have to bridge as much as there's a hardware API, you still have to bridge a little bit into the hardware world and just understand which pins you're actually going for, unless you actually want to put a wire on each pin and start uh, going crazy with LEDs. Um, and then, um, as it says on the GitHub page, the ESP8266 uh, port is actually experimental. And they use a cross-compiler and also um, a open source building tool chain to actually do it, which is a bit of a pain, but when you get it working, it's, it's wonderful. Um, and has a whole bunch of features which are uh, useful to us. Um, uh, for instance, uh, it has support for the NeoPixel um, LEDs, which I'll show later. Um, and you can do HTTP requests with it. You can even run the web REPL on it and then interface with it from a web browser uh, to the device instead of using a serial uh, connection. And building it is a bit more of a process. You need the P Falcon ESP Open SDK based off the SPRIF system's uh, own proprietary one. And it takes a while to build and has a lot of uh, packages it's dependent on. So I'll rather just run through this. Then when you actually get to building it, you have to also build the um, Empire Cross compiler and then eventually actually get to the ESP8266. Once again, the Im uh, embedded TLS library and make, and then you end up with a firmware combined dot bin uh, file, which you then can flash with ESP tool, which is a great Python uh, tool for flashing the ESP8266. And then hopefully you'll have a working MicroPython uh, on your ESP8266, and as I've said in the past, uh, <laughs> when you um, update your Git, sometimes this doesn't go that well. Especially if you don't recursively update all the sub-modules, it goes horrible. 
Um, so, um, a couple of things, uh, less modules, doesn't have that Pi board API, and you can obviously set the frequency to 160 megahertz, but uh, I haven't used that myself. I haven't seen the, the usefulness for it now. So, I'm going to go into the to a bit more of a practical demo and we'll see how that that ends up goodness Okay, so um, why it's saying that is I've got a web server running on it and I didn't control C it before I uh, did a soft reboot. So the address is already in use, so I'll have to actually uh, reset the device. But before we get there, this is the ESP8266. Um, it has its own uh, bunch of uh, classes and functions that you can use. And um, a lot of um, direct, uh, you can actually interface the memory yourself. Uh, another useful thing to note is that you can actually check the firmware from the device and compare it to after you flashed it, uh, which gets really useful. Um, if I do a quick... Uh, demonstration. So um, I don't know if everyone will be able to see this, but uh, it has a copy paste function which will also actually check your uh, code for indentation and stuff like that. Um, so I hope everyone can see that. I'll do it on the webcam now as well. Not working. Yeah. Of course, live demos are the best. Let's give me a second. Don't change any of that. Success. So, um, what I've learned the hard way is often, <laughs> especially with MicroPython, switching the device on and off again actually helps. Um, or, as I did five minutes before this talk, reflashing the device with the old firmware also helps if you've really screwed it up along the way. So, on to a bit maybe of a more interesting demo see if this works as well. So um, in terms of actually programming it and using it, um, if we go to the ESP8266, um, except for all the C code, um, it has a build and a so the build directory is usually where you'll get your firmware from. I like building it in Docker because um, I can throw everything away by just destroying the Docker image and rebuilding it. Um, but um, if you have a look, it has a scripts uh, directory, uh, and you'll see a main.py and a boot.py. Um, that I've added on, that's generally the idea of when you end up building a device that will actually start running when you restart it instead of um, interfacing it with a, 
uh, UART and then programming it. Um, so I've dropped uh, a bunch of code in main.py and then referenced um, that in the um, boot.py. Um, also, if if that really doesn't run, um, you can actually go to the modules directory and uh, screw with underscore boot.py and eventually it'll work. Um, that also gives you an idea of which um, modules are available. Um, so by default, the web REPL, OneWire, Flash, BDEV, all of that except the BMP180 modules are already in uh, uh by default, I added BMP 180, uh, and I'll show you why in a bit. Um, so when you actually build it, the scripts.py gets added to the firmware, and then you flash that to the device. And when you restart it, it'll read the main.py and uh, run that, if you've written it correctly, uh, every time you give power to the device. So you know, in an Internet of Things kind of environment, that's how you probably want to do it is if the device loses power, you plug it in again, starts up, and it's ready to go. So we'll have a look and see if that that works. And I really hope that my colleagues don't remember what that um, password was. So that's just a little demo that I bought for today. Um, I was talking about that BMP 180. Um, and let's see if I can actually get it to show on the webcam. Um, if you have a look, that little device um, right next to the ESP. So I've got a much better. Um, at the top, I've got an LED NeoPixel ring. And then I also have uh, the the BMP 180, which uh, gives you both um, gives you a temperature, pressure, and altitude readout um, over I2C. So a really nifty little device, easy to uh, interface with on the ESP8026 with that module that I talked about. And then um, I have three of the pins um, set up so. Um, if I trigger the pins, which most of you might not see, you can actually set it off on the device. And that's the kind of uh, things that you can do right off the bat with the ESP8266, is write a little web server. And um, I will get back to that. So for you, for everyone who didn't see it earlier on, um, was sitting more to the back. Um, I got the LED today only, so it's been rather experimental, and I luckily got it to work, so it's not in that uh, demo. So do that again. So if people in the back can't see, that's the kind of stuff that you can do re with a short amount of code. Um, simply assign the pin uh, to the NeoPixel driver and then uh, give it a tuple of the colors. Um, and this has gone through a couple of loops uh, based on which LED it was. Um, and um, some timing. We actually changed the timing to work with the camera. So um, in terms of like being a Python developer, it's easy to understand the documentation and quickly write something like that. Um, this was the little web server, all very quick code that I wrote, so none of it's probably very good, but you know, it's 74 lines of um, Python. It's fairly easy to get a little web server going. Uh, one of the stranger things that I found that uh, with this specific device, and I, I suppose uh, depending on uh, which 
uh, dodgy Chinese uh, website you use to order these from, beyond 80 lines, you can't actually copy and paste it into the REPL. It'll just give you uh, errors saying that you've made syntax mistakes or that uh, the keyboard interrupt is wrong or something like that. So um, obviously, like I've said earlier, that the ESP8260 build is experimental. Uh, most of MicroPython, I would be of the opinion, is experimental. So keep that in mind. And for most people, uh, in the long run, actually going and writing the C code, Arduino, you can use the Arduino tools to also program an ESP8266. So in the long run, if you're worried about the resources, maybe writing it in C or something else is a good idea. But if you want to get off the ground quickly, um, if you want to um, just prototype some stuff, or even if you don't care if it's running lean or not, M MicroPython might be a good idea. Um, I don't know how much time I've used. A little bit of time. Okay. Um, that's pretty much, I think, what I have to say. Um, I've put on a lot of resources. Um, uh, if anyone knows Adafruit, um, they're excellent, excellent, excellent resources on their website. Lots of videos, documentation, and their devices easily interface um, so far from what I've found with the ESP8026, making it easy. Um, the kind of things that I do in the future with it is um, using, st which is in my bag, something like an Arduino. Um, you can communicate via UR to the Arduino and then run code to then further uh, break out, use the pins on the Arduino to do more hardware uh, where the ESP8266 has 12 pins and you might need more, then you could do something like that. Um, beyond MicroPython, if you go slightly more expensive in terms of devices, I mean a Raspberry Pi runs Python. Uh, if you look at something like a domino.io, which runs OpenWRT, probably not a need for MicroPython. So it's a bit of a niche in between like paying $2 for a device um, to actually spending $20 and up. Um, and otherwise, any questions? <laughs> oh, and I'll stick around if anyone actually wants to have a look or has crazy code that they want to run on it that I haven't thought of. Thanks very much, Chris. That was uh, very interesting. Um, I've got some take a lot vouchers for any questions. Um, I just had a look, and we should also speak to Take a Lot and ask them if they can stock some of the ESP8266s. Um, um, so on that, uh, the ESP8266 is available in South Africa. So off the top of my head, um, Communica sells it. Um, but y buying it off AliExpress is going to cost you 20 to 30 Rand. Buying it here is going to cost you 80. So it's that... Uh, wait four months, potentially get it stuck in customs, or pay 80 rand. So it's that kind of kind of thing. Maybe for the sensors, buy it overseas and have it shipped in. Uh, the ESPs maybe buy it here, and specifically look for the D1. And then there's another one that I can't remember uh, what it's called. Um, SensePost recently did their bad USB talk based on one of the ESP8266 models. Okay. Uh, any other questions? So my, my question is, um, just what's the kind of latency or the kind of guaranteed latency you get of MicroPython? Obviously, if you program in C, you can kind of do things at microsecond level. Yes. So, uh, like for instance, if you're doing audio processing, it's not going to be good. Um, so you can, th I haven't got to that point, but they have uh, decorators that you can put on functions to run faster or more natively based on the architecture, but that will also be based on the architecture. So it'll be based on the device that you have. Um, but probably see if you want something real time fast, um, like for instance, audio processing, uh, image processing, Hi. Um, a quick question. Um, I noticed when you run the um, interpreter, it um, tells you if main.py exists or not, and it runs it if it if it runs it. 
where do you put main.py? Is there a file system? Um, how does that happen? That's, uh, yeah, I should have probably mentioned that there is a file system. Let's see if I can get to it. Um, uh, so there is a basic file system on. Um, there is a basic file system. You can uh, change directory, remove, create. I think it's a VAT file system. It depends on if you're using the flash on it or if you're using an SD card like with the Pi board. Um, but I haven't looked into that a lot. Most of it was just running code. Um, but um, the main.py is in a directory depending on which device you're using. But specific, well, mostly all the devices will have it in a directory called scripts. And um, you'll obviously put it in there, build the firmware, and then flash it onto the device. Um, I'm not sure where on the device it actually flashes it. Um, but I assume it's after the firmware, uh, the, the basic executables, it puts it on the device as well. Um, it sort of does, uh, they talk about some kind of compilation or optimization of the code that you put in there, how that works, I'm not 100% sure. Okay, I think okay. we've got time for one more question. Um, hi, um, do you have any advice for someone, I'm guessing you're from an embedded software background yourself, um, do you have advice for someone who's in a pure software uh, environment now with a background from engineering and how do you personally apply this? So let me start with, I have no background in embedded devices at all. So this has been a bit of a learning experience for myself. Um, I have a little brother who is second year engineering and he helps me understand some of what I'm doing. Otherwise, I read through the documentation and I think that's the core idea and strength of MicroPython is uh, giving embedded kind of development to uh, devs, normal devs. So I have a friend who does um, embedded development and the kind of stuff that he told me is that long term or the kind of stuff that they would do in production wouldn't be something like this because the firmware, um, when it's compiled, um, let's have a look at how big it actually is. Um, Um, it's fairly big for embedded device where if it's compiled C, it's tiny. So to be honest, um, I still don't know that much about hardware, but it helped me learn it a lot quicker. And um, I think for someone who's not of that background, you can pick it up quickly. The documentation is straightforward enough. And the kinds of devices that the documentation are on are fairly straightforward. So um, the little pressure and uh, temperature sensor gives you a digital output. So it's easy to work with. It's not like, um, you know, far out there. But uh, I'm sure you'll be able to pick it up quickly. The bolt system and stuff is a bit of a pain. But when you get there, it's, it's a lot of fun. You, you can quickly get going with like the LEDs. The LEDs I got two hours ago. And it's working, so that that should give you an idea. Um, is it a quick question? Okay, quick question because lunch is. Uh cool. Um, how did you find the impact of using MicroPython on the system in terms of power consumption and duration, or drain battery drain? Um, so I haven't looked at that a lot yet. Um, the device as a whole is very low power. I'm not running it at 160 megahertz, the CPU. So um, I'll have to come back to you on that. So uh, most of the time I've been powering it off my laptop or a power bank that I usually charge my phone with, which could run it forever. But uh, two AA batteries, I'm sure it'll give you a week's power, depending on how intense your code is. If you're going to write uh, 
loops that clock the CPU the whole time, then you're probably going to run out of power. Uh, also consider the wireless LAN will also drain the power and driving, uh, depending on the, the how you set up your um, your devices on it, uh, but obviously MicroPython is probably a bit more inefficient than running C or Arduino or something, so I'd assume that it would use probably one and a half times what Arduino would do or, s or something like that. Um, I'll have to look into it. Um, I, I'm thinking of dropping some in a park somewhere and seeing if people connect to the AP or why not. All right. Well, that was Thanks. a very interesting talk. Thanks very much, Christo. A round of applause. <laughs>